What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and on today's episode we are working on the GMC Sierra again it's a 2001 with a 4.8 tool drive I think it's an SLE yes, SLE on this and he has a crack in his radiator I don't know if we'll be able to see it through the grill or not but I'll show it to you whenever we get it out. But yes, this right here does have a crack in the radiator. Uh, it's been sitting overnight. But you can see there's still some dripping spots here, there, and that one's dripping over there. So I'm guessing he has a couple leaks in it. It may be dripping down from the um, front, going down the front little like uh, engine cover or suspension cover that's on the front of the truck I think that's what's happening it's coming off the front cross member but uh, yesterday when he dropped it off it was just dripping mainly from right here where it was pressurized so but we're going to be doing the radiator the lower hose and a thermostat on this all at the same time just as preventative maintenance and while we got it out be the perfect time to do this so I went ahead and pulled all these clips out of this little front radiator support cover. I uh, figured y'all didn't want to see me doing that. All it is is this little style right here. It's got like a little piece in the middle you pull up and they lift right out. There should be seven of those. And we'll take this off. And then the fan shroud is two pieces. Um, they are like the little body clips almost like that where the center pulls out and then the whole clip will come off. And then the radiator hose on the upper portion is held in with this right there. And then sometimes it's clipped in right there, sometimes it's not. It just depends on how this is positioned or if anybody's ever done anything before. But if it is, just pull that out. We're not replacing the upper hose or just doing the lower hose as the upper hose is a lot easier to change if it pops. And we're just going to do the lower one just because it is easier to do it at this point. So I'm going to pull this air tube off there I already pulled the sensor off uh, for the airflow there's a worm gear clamp here and there and then this right here should pull right out see if I can put y'all where y'all can watch some of this this kind of looks dark to me for some reason on the camera so if it's dark I'm sorry about that this to pull off okay. should be blue stuff there we go Now that that's out of the way, pull this off. I'm just double checking that there's no other visible leaks anywhere at the moment. Right. May be able to see that little clip down in there. There it is. Like I said, just pry this middle up and then the whole clip will come out and you should be able to take this upper radiator uh, shroud off. And you should be able to move the hose enough to uh, get it around there too. So I'm gonna pull the upper radiator hose off and there's two 10 millimeters there and there. And then we'll get a better view of everything once we get that upper uh, shroud out. I got the bolts and the clips out now. And see if we can. Yeah, it come out a lot easier than I thought. But set that down. And now you can see that we have a lot more room. Oh, yeah. Radiator was definitely leaking. I can actually see it leaking. Uh, I'll show it to y'all. Uh, 
see it leaking right there? Just constantly dripping. Wow. Well, at least we know that it is busted. But now what I'm going to do is actually stick a drain pan underneath here and go ahead and open the drain valve. They do call this a petcock valve for anybody who doesn't know that. So I'm going to go ahead and start draining it. And while it's draining, we're going to take this upper radiator hose off right here. And we'll start taking this hose off and our uh, transmission lines as well. Also, there's a hose down there that runs to your throttle body. Just a little tip whenever you go to drain the radiator pull the cap off of your radiator if you have one or uh, your overflow tank whichever one and it will actually flow out better because it's not pulling a vacuum and this lets it like free free flow through the system a little bit harder to say than it should have been but we took this hose off and that little one right there that little one right here is the one that goes to the throttle body it's right there the bigger upper one goes to your overflow tank and we have these quick disconnect uh clips out on the transmission lines upper and lower and i have the hose clamps off of the lower radiator hose now these clips if you've never done them before they're going to have this little plastic piece over it pull that back then you'll get a pick and you can they make like a quick disconnect tool you can shove in there and then you can pull it out real quick because it spreads it but i just find it just as easy to pull the clips out you just get a pick get underneath one leg up and slide it to the side and you can pull it right out now the new radiator should come with new quick disconnects and new clips but if not i always keep these because these right here can go flying and you will never find them again uh, I call them Jesus clips because the whole time you're doing it, you're screaming Jesus, Jesus the whole time you're losing them and all that stuff. But that's the clips right there. We got them out. Now, when you pull these lines out, transmission fluid is going to come out. Not much, but just to be warned. And they should just pour it out. You see how much come out of that one as it's coming out now I'm, i already closed my petcock valve i'm gonna move a uh, pan over so it catches this transmission fluid all right now we got that Let's see if I can get. and plus whenever i take this hose off we're gonna lose coolant We're replacing this anyway, but I'm still going to take it off. If you can't get it off, you can cut it if you're replacing it. it won't make a big difference on that. Now, all we got left to do is take this right here out this bolt. There should be two of those. I think they're 12, so one right here and one right there. And then once you do that, the radiator should tilt back and you can lift it straight out of here let me grab my 12 millimeter and then i'll show me pulling it out i lied it's a 13. most times these aren't really super tight and every once in a while you can get one that can be a pain in the butt this right here wasn't tight at all that's your bolts. And there we have it one radiator out to take the thermostat out now 
it's just thinking it's two bolts on this one yeah it's just two bolts on this one right there and there's one underneath should be 10 millimeters uh, once you do that you can pull it out and be mindful that there's going to be coolant in here as well because that goes directly into your water pump but that there's two tins out and you can pull your thermostat out just wanted to show y'all where the crack was it's right there oh, i don't drop it but see that big crack right there through the tank actually it's got two on it. or three wow it's got like three cracks on this so yeah she was leaking pretty good well let me go grab the new one i'll show you all the part numbers for everything and then uh we'll start putting her all back together so these right here are on the bottom of the radiator if they stick to your radiator make sure you get them off and transform over to your new one uh, one of them stuck in the truck and one of them stuck onto the radiator but here is our radiator right here i think it is a murray yes i have to find the part number part number is 432407 lay it down and pull these tabs out if I can. There we go. The radiator is in there. That piece of comes out. Oh, actually this one did come with the rubber pieces. So you may not have to do it. I know on some of them they don't come with them. pulling it out just to make sure I got the right part and this one right here comes with the quick disconnects already threaded in for you there is another one that's about four dollars cheaper with them already not installed you get installing yourself but I figured for four dollars why not and i got a promotional thing with this I gotta see which one i think it was this one yeah as you can see they got these little tabs so this one i'm gonna leave out because it is stuck inside of the truck pretty good and i'm not going to disturb it we do have to transfer over those right there on both of them and put them in here so let me get to transferring everything over everything does look the same on it it's got the fan shroud got both water ports um, transmission lines and then the petcock over there and hose connections are the same so just want to let everybody know if you have a stock water pump you're gonna have to get the whole thermostat housing because it has the thermostat attached to it like this one that's what i needed i got the other one i thought he had already replaced the water pump but apparently this is the stock water pump and he's got over 200,000 miles on this truck very impressive but if you have an aftermarket one and it has the thermostat housing on it you're going to need this style so I'll give you the part number real quick. Murray, it is 45687. That's if you have the aftermarket water pump. And then this one right here is for the factory one, 37987. And it comes with the whole housing and everything because it's integrated into it. And it's just two bolts right here. Let me throw this in and then I will tell you what the torque spec is. I gotta look it up real quick. So we can torque it down and then we can start putting the uh, hoses and everything on the radiators already in as you can see so we got the biggest part done thermostat housing is on and torqued and it torques to seven foot pounds or 89 inch pounds to be exact uh, if you don't have a torque wrench that goes that low i know most people are just going to hand tighten it so just do not over tighten it because those are aluminum where the threads are because it does go into an aluminum water pump so just don't crank down on it too hard and crack it like i said seven foot pounds is not a lot so just be careful when you're doing that now we're going to put the 
radiator hose on this is the lower radiator hose 22437 and this one does have the protector on it the old one did not Now we can push our transmission lines in. You can just push these in. These already have the clips in them. Now let's put our hose down here. Um, and do the overflow hose now you got thermostat radiator hose radiator all the hoses on there except for the upper radiator hose always make sure that the new petcock is closed which this one was a little loose so always make sure you try to close that before you put your radiator fan shroud in now we're going to put the lower shroud in with this hose, the upper hose tucked back, you can turn it in and go under and it should go on just fine. We got everything back together now and all we gotta do is just start putting coolant in there. The customer did bring their own antifreeze and coolant. So it's supposed to be in the back. It says it's 50-50. He brought two of them right there. We'll see. He said some stuff he had left over if I don't forget to shut the right door first. There we go. The truck is running now and I guess it does have a kick to it. I believe it is a lifter and a timing chain on this like that. It's it does have a good bit of miles on it that we're monitoring to make sure there's no leaks anywhere. Doesn't seem to be any that I see right now. But we're gonna let it come up to temperature and then we'll look again and we'll put more coolant in it as it needs it just because once the thermostat opens it should go down some so let me get it up to temperature and then we'll come back temperature is somewhere around 200 uh, the thermostat still hasn't opened up yet the lower hose is still cool and is it hot any of that stuff we're going to keep an eye on it until it does open because we will have to add some more coolant to it but I figured I'd probably go ahead and close the video out right here we don't see any leaks on it it is pressurized because it has been running forever 20 minutes and there's no leaks on anything none of the hoses the lower hose is holding good the radiator isn't leaking and all that good stuff but since i'm going to close it out right here if y'all have any questions comments concerns let me know in the comment section i get to them as soon as possible if you did something wrong let me know i'll correct it or if i left out anything i'll let you know what the information on that is um, if you enjoyed the video hit all the buttons like subscribe notification bell uh, if you didn't enjoy it let me know why in the comment section i'll try to fix it on the next video and i do have the patreon instagram the shirts hats and stickers if anybody's interested a uh, portion of the patreon does go towards a charity of your choice and that's every month not just the first month and remember torque to stike y'all have a great day